Okay, come here, I wanna show you something. Look at all these different welding exercises here. I've taught these exercises to hundreds, if not thousands of students before, yet after years of professional production TIG welding, a bunch of schooling, a bunch of certifications, and working with so many people to teach them how to do exercises like this here, one of the most common questions I get asked about TIG welding stainless steel is, how do you get your TIG welds to look like they have a gold finish? Great question, I love answering this one, let's get into it. Okay, you can see here I am using the Everlast Typhoon 230. This machine is awesome. There's tons of different settings and different options you can use to customize this machine, but today we're gonna keep it simple. Here's the settings that I'm gonna be using for this demonstration here. You can pause this screen here, or you can rewind so you can recheck the settings later. These might differ a little bit for you, but they should be pretty darn close to what you will need to do this exercise. The next thing we're gonna do is take a look at the torch here. Here's what I'm using. I will be using a number 15 cup. Everything else is pretty much straightforward as far as what you're looking at here, and it's gonna be perfect for stainless steel TIG welding. We can take a look at the material that I'm gonna be using for this exercise as well here. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing too crazy about this practice material at all. Now, before we get going here, we're gonna go over something really important first. And this is gonna be something that I refer to as the three levels of oxide. If you don't know what oxide is, it's all good. Let's check this out. Okay, let's take a look at oxide level three first. And a lot of you might be familiar with this one. Oh my gosh, gross. This is the first level of oxide that is very common when most people are starting to learn. We can see that the welding area is completely covered with excessive oxide. That's what this gray stuff is. It's just a heavy layer of oxide that is formed when the welding area is exposed to our atmosphere. Okay, it's all good. We're gonna look at the second level of oxide here. Ooh, pretty. Wait a minute, these are pretty colors. What do you mean oxide? Yes, my friend, the pretty colors are actually a formation of oxide. Obviously this oxide looks way better than the other level of oxide like this stuff here. Basically the way that I describe this to beginners is essentially pretty colors are a formation of oxide, whether on the actual welding area itself or in the heat affected zone surrounding it. This isn't the same as a complete problem where the oxide is forming over everything. Now it is very common in the welding industry that there is requirements that zero oxide can be present. So actually having pretty colors on your work is a big no-no. But again, this is different codes and different standards for different applications of TIG welding professionally in the industry. So in my opinion, when people are just get going, especially with practice exercises, just like what we're doing here, a little bit of coloring is absolutely cool. Just be aware that when we start to see colors forming on your welding area, that this is a formation of oxide, although it is a pretty one. Okay, so the next one, this is the one that I refer to as the first level of oxide. Here we go, baby, gold. You can see this finish is completely different from the last one that we looked at, and especially comparing this gold example to the first one we looked at. You could probably guess from everything that we looked at so far, this level of oxide actually refers to having very little or no oxide present at all. It's a little more difficult to get results like this, but this is what we're gonna do today. Now, the first thing that we can have a look at is the cup that I have selected for this exercise here. I love this one. This is from Edge Welding Cups. It's a number 15, so it's a little bit bigger in size. But the cool thing about this cup is it actually has this secondary screen pressed into it here. You can see this with other brands of cups as well. They're relatively common. But the secondary screen is going to help stabilize the gas as it covers the welding area. Now, personally, I find using cups that are a little bit larger without a secondary screen in it to be a little bit tough to get to stabilize. In some circumstances, especially with some joint configurations, I can find this a little bit turbulent and difficult to control sometimes. The gas coverage with something like this here is just honestly gonna be way more consistent. Now, because this is a larger diameter of a cup opening, this is obviously gonna cover a larger welding area. Take a look at this diagram here. We can imagine that if I was welding this area right here, we can essentially picture the heat affected zone. Even though most of this zone is actually outside of the actual welding area, this is stuff that can react with our atmosphere as well and collect oxide. This is stuff that can appear like a level two oxide of pretty colors, or if this is extremely hot, this can create a level three example of oxide. Obviously, as we take a look at this diagram and picture here, as long as the heat affected zone is properly shielded, we will prevent oxide from forming. Now thinking like this, as far as keeping it pretty simple, makes sense, right? But here's what makes it a little more tricky is we're gonna to start to introduce different variables to this. Let's take a look at an example of a butt joint here. As I am starting out at the beginning of the weld, the plate is going to be cool. 
There is more material surrounding the area. Obviously I haven't done any welding yet, so it's gonna be at a lower base temperature. And I find that generally somebody is able to control the heat at the beginning area here pretty easily. Now, if somebody is traveling along with an exercise like this, things are gonna to start to change at about the two thirds mark as they near the end of the joint. Around the last one third of the joint, they're gonna to start to see the overall heat input start to increase, in some cases drastically. At this point, we can picture our heat affected zone starting to grow larger. And this is what can cause things to become a little bit hairy. What has happened now is that the heat affected zone has started to extend the area of the gas coverage in the trailing area here. This can happen near the end of a joint like this. Like we talked about, it's definitely gonna happen if somebody's welding with much thinner plate material. In some cases, this is gonna happen very easily if somebody is welding with excessive heat or inadequate filler material. So now that we can picture the heat affected zone getting excessively big or wide, even with a good cup with good and proper gas coverage, you are going to struggle to prevent this oxide from forming. Even with just the level two pretty oxide that we talked about, this is gonna happen very easily. Essentially, if the gas coverage or the area the gas is covering is becoming smaller than the actual heat affected zone that needs to be covered, this is where we're gonna to start to see oxide forming. Now, a lot of people think that getting a gold finish to their TIG welding is essentially just a matter of having good gear and a lot of gas running through it. This is absolutely true in some sense. However, this is kind of backwards to what I teach my students in my online TIG welding program. The one thing that we wanna think about as the biggest priority is actually not to think about gas coverage, but we wanna think about the overall heat input as being the most important part. I encourage people to think like this. The biggest priority with controlling oxide is going to be controlling the overall heat input. And we're only gonna think about good accessories and cool gas cups and stuff like this as accessories to help complement a properly balanced heat input. I teach people how to control the heat so it stays a little bit more local to the welding area, it doesn't spread out as far. We wanna prevent the overall heat affected zone from becoming excessive and tougher to cover with gas. Like we talked about, even with the best gear in the world, if the heat affected zone has become really excessive and out of control, it's not gonna be able to do its job. If you control the heat affected zone, you control the finish way easier. This material I am welding here is pretty thin. I am definitely covering it with more than a generous amount of gas, but the main thing I'm doing is intentionally focusing on keeping my heat affected zone and overall heat input very narrow and controlled. Even as I approach the end of the joint, typically as the heat input is starting to increase, I am controlling the overall heat input, which is gonna make it much easier for the gas supply to do its job. In my online TIG welding program, I think that honestly my first three or four exercises focus specifically on this. We're just gonna learn how to properly control the heat input and break down and scrutinize our work to actually get results on how we did for this variable. Honestly, with my program and the way I teach people even in person is I kind of flip everything on its head as far as how people usually learn. At this point, once a student has a good understanding of how to properly control heat input, my students are able to get a much better result with their finish much easier. And whatever gear or accessories that they may be using can do its job much easier. I actually have shown some of the most important exercises to learn good heat control here on my YouTube channel before. This episode here is probably one of the most important ones that you're probably gonna wanna watch. And this is gonna have a practice exercise in it that you've probably never seen before or definitely aren't expecting to have to learn first. It's gonna teach you how to control and break down and understand your heat input. This way you have a clear idea of exactly what is going on. If you haven't seen that episode yet, go check it out right now. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James, Phil and Show. We will talk soon, peace.